hear the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're gonna have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're gonna have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes, heat transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom, and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're gonna to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's a, one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful helpful guy and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, is gonna be something that's gonna stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, the training system that we have down here in the basement, allows us to wire up the uh, panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. 
it was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of the of my degree not necessarily the design aspect it helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, do a task and some of the um, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient one of the things that we've been very fortunate here at indiana tech is that we've had a grant through aep to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy. And we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And, but it wasn't just learning about that, it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's gonna be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab, you need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may wanna know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. I can finally get a new one. Yeah. A breezy yet breezy day here in Fort Wayne, Indiana as we get ready for 
the second to last home women's lacrosse game of the season for the Warriors. We'll step aside from the National Anthem. Starting lineup, this is Indiana Tech Women's Lacrosse, presented by Southern It appears some technical difficulties this Sunday afternoon with the public address system. So we'll get started a few seconds early here. Once again, a windy day here in the Summit City, but compared to where we were on Wednesday night, a much preferable day outside. Carson Watkins joining you here today as we get ready for this matchup. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference matchup between the Aquinas Saints and the Indiana Tech Warriors coming into the day 9-3, the 7th ranked team in the NAIA, 3rd ranked team in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference, 9-3 on the season with a 4-1 conference record coming off of a blowout win against Rochester, 22-1 in a game where the scoring came quick and fast and not much after that. Decided to slow it up a little bit and just let the shot clock run out most times in order to help with sportsmanship. <laughs> Nonetheless, the Qantas Saints <laughs> who are 2-3 and three on the season. Qantas 2 and 9 on the season. They're 2 and 3 in conference. My apologies. A little misprint. Struggling on the road so far this season. Only 1 and 6. Their last road win coming against Madonna earlier this season. And the 
They'll look to keep it up. Co coming, up, they did get a home win against Rochester as well, a 19 to one win against Rochester, and now they're on a two-game losing streak against Concordia and Bethel games, which they scored 10, 11 goals in. We're almost ready for the opening face-off, and we'll get ready for Sunday afternoon lacrosse here in the Summit City. Faceoff is in the air, and it is won by the Saints, and we are ready to go. <laughs> Starting goal, 10 goalkeepers today, Kat Hoff, the junior, getting a, much of the starting load down the stretch. And across the way... Kennedy Slitson, the junior out of Brighton, Michigan, getting the start, and it'll be an early attack for the Saints. Behind the goal, it's Caitlin Hall with it. Little move here from the leading scorer on the team. Shaylin Riggs, and it's taken away. Here comes Tech the other way. It's Brooke Burr taking it across midfield on her lonesome. Gives it up to Kylie King. King's going to give it up to Maul. Indiana Tech won on a scoring barrage against Rochester on a multi-game winning streak now. They've won their last four. They lost lost to the top-ranked team in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference, the Lawrence Tech Blue Devils, on the road. Lawrence Tech only a one-loss team to this point in the season. 45 seconds left on the shot clock. Deja Rucksters, owner of the Indiana Tech number one play of the month for the months of March 2024, goes to the lane and scores to get the Warriors started here early. As is tradition here at Indiana Tech, they usually play Pump It Up, the famous dance song after goals. The speaker system does not appear to be working today, so it's up to the bench today to give us the vocals. And nonetheless, Deja Ruxers nets another one. Ground ball to start off the faceoff. Can't quite get scooped up. It goes all the way into the Indiana Tech attacking zone. No one's really had possession of it. Battle for the yellow ball down low. And eventually Brooke Burr comes up with it. Indiana Tech looking for another fast start. And we have a stoppage of play. That was goal number 30 for Deja Rucksters on the season. And here she has a chance for 31. Going in and a little wide. Picks it up. Ball knocked away. King going for it. Grabs it back. So 
one goes away. Ground ball. Going to be picked back up. Brooke Maul gives it up to Brooke Burr. Burr goes behind the net again. Gives it up. One timer. It goes. Michelle Phil scores again. And the Warriors picking up right where they left off. The leading goal scorer on this team. Gets her 30th. Second leading goal scorer on my team. Slight, slight fat correction there. Nonetheless, Indiana Tech picking up right where they left off and trying to get right before the conference tournament. Conference tournament does start on April 16th. Stay updated on Indiana Tech's social media pages and you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to see if we will have any of their game tournament games live. Michelle Farrell comes again. Here comes a hard collision from Faith Donnelly. And now it's going to be Donnelly, who is the leading goal scorer on this team, going for goal 50 on the season. Going in, decides to pass it off, and it will be plucked out of the air and picked up by the goalie, Stiltson. 11.25 to go in the first quarter. Stiltson still with the ball. And throws it above the head of Rings. And it goes all the way down the field. It will be picked up by Hall. And Hall has it back. Ball on the ground, whistle sounds. See if it will be a free position. Looks like it will be. Ring's gonna take it, and she bounces it home, and the Saints get on the board. Decided to go low on Cat Hoff. And Hoff pays for it as the Saints cut the lead in half. 2-1 to one now with 10.43 to go. Tech will win the face-off. On a stipulation. All the way down the field. As the shot goes a little too high. one gets in front and another goal for the Warriors Faith Donnelly goes top shelf and once again the Warriors up to Right over the stick of Stilson. And Warriors trying to cruise. 
once more. Thirteen mile an hour winds this afternoon. Juanes gets the ball back. It's going to be given up to Bailey, who once again goes behind the net towards Hall. Through the lane, meeting a lot of traffic. Is mine rich? And looks like she'll get a. See if she'll get a free position. Flag comes out. Doesn't appear like anybody's going to the penalty box. And once again, mine rich. This time we'll take the free position on Hoff. Try to cut the lead back again and Hoff right into her stick. Now it's Donnelly. Taking it herself towards the crease into the attacking zone. Donnelly passes it off and right past Maul. King giving chase and picks it up. Major Rucksters gives it up to Burr and stop it to play. Looks like we'll get a free position for the Warriors. We will. It'll be Michelle Farrell taking it for her second goal of the day. Potentially. Ties to pass it off, and once again, Maul cannot complete the pass, and it will be St. Maul. Seltzen gives it up. She's trying to at least. Look like she did. Now she's walking all the way into the attacking zone with not very much opposition. She completes the pass. Meinrich loses it. Ball on the ground and eventually Meinrich picks it up. 7.53 to go. around bounces and Hoff finds it in her net shot by rings Hoff makes another huge save tries to get it over to Rucksters can't do it unless Donnelly will get it right around the orange line Farrell loses it over her head, and that one will go out of bounds.
Moved out again. It's mine rich. Mine rich and a flag on the play for a hold. And Aquinas will get it back. Meinrich, 5.30 to go in the first. To get apologies if the wind is interfering with the sound as Hoff knocks it down. And it's going to be picked up now by the Warriors. Jade Hamilton gives it up. Nicole Noel Ricky with it gives it up. Maul completes the pass. Donnelly spin move. Donnelly passes it in. Top shelf. They score. Brooke Burr with another goal on the day. A great spin move by Donnelly. Create open space to find Burr, who's able to take it top shelf and pump it up. Warriors want to pump up the score some more. Faceoff goes sailing back, and the Warriors try to make a play on it. And offsides, one of the Warriors' feet got past the orange line. Won't matter too much as the balls turn right back over. Maul has it over to Donnelly. Warriors controlling offensive possession at the current moment. Behind the net, King. Deja Rucksters. Donnelly through the lane. Donnelly goes low. Knocked down by Stilts. Warriors get it back. Moving around. Donnelly goes through defenders. Gets knocked down. And see if there will be a... There will be a yellow card. That's a penalty. Warriors will be playing a man up now. Open position. Penalty shot once again for Donnelly. 3.50 to go in the first. Warriors lead by three. Ball is down. This one goes low. And they score. <laughs> Donnelly goes low with it. So to the Saints trying to make a comeback. Playing from behind. Saints have scored 11 their last two games. And now they'll be looking to... Ball is in the air. And it's going to be picked up out of the air. Ball on the ground. And but quickly picked back up. By Farrell. Rocksters. Whistle official stops play for 
unspecified reasons. See if there might have been a clock malfunction. Nonetheless, here comes the Warriors. Burr. Moving around. Throws it up. And ball on the ground will be picked up by King. Through. And they score again. Warriors piling it on now. Brooke Burr once again goes top shelf. Make that a five goal lead. I guess not. <laughs> they wipe the goal off the board. Not sure why. Nonetheless, Aquinas comes the other way. Knocked down through the air. Pitch back up by the Saints. Good defense by Rucksters. Rucksters tries to knock it away. Might get caught call with a cross check. She will. Now it's going to be Rings taking a penalty shot. <laughs> Only Aquinas goal of the day came via the penalty shot. Hoff has made two saves on them. Need to reset the shot clock. There it is. Hoff can't get that one. And rings. And that's a goal 34 on the season. Timeout on the field. We'll step aside and take it with them. Warriors lead by three. Rings on the penalty shot here. Cuts the lead to three. We'll be back here after these messages. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the eight to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to some of the uh, devices that you'll be used, but I like to actually assign projects that are, you know, realistic projects. Those projects, this project-based learning, help students to work together in a group and be hands-on with their, uh, the material or the uh, product that they're creating. Engineering students at Indiana Tech 
are, to me, stand out because I know that they've had a lot of experiences working in groups, working on projects, um, doing lab experiments to help them understand the material, and I think that prepares them well for industry. First thing I'll tell a high school student. Welcome back out of the timeout. The Warriors up three win the faceoff. Ruxter has just got a penalty for a cross check. She's back in the game. Ricky gives it up. No, the Warriors passing around. Farrell goes in. Farrell decides to back up. Tough defense on Farrell. Maul gets in front of the net. Maul with a spin move tries to get a shot off. Knocked out, but Maul regains possession. Try to get it in front of the net to Ricky. No can do as Equanis will get the ball back. 115 to go in the first. Aquanas can take all the time they need. Errant pass winds up momentarily with Deja Ruxters. She faces quite a bit of contact and gets it back. Ruxters picks it up after the infraction and gets it over Ricky with it. Going to the lane and it will be a stoppage of play. Farrell got knocked over briefly. And she'll go for the penalty shot. Trying to get the Warriors lead back up to four. Ricky going in. Ricky scores the goal. Farrell, my apologies. Farrell gets it in the back of the net off of the penalty shot. And once again, the Warriors win it lead. By four. Indiana Tech having a, lo a lot of luck with those low shots today. So 37 seconds to go. And picked up. Deja Ruxters after the Warriors win the faceoff. Ruxters going through. Ruxters goes low and it's knocked away. Donnelly over to Burr. Burr, Ruxters in front of the goal. They score! Two quick goals for the Warriors. Ball is in the air and it's picked up by Burr. Warriors get a ground ball and Aquatus. This one's in the air for quite some time and it will be a slash. Three seconds to go. Last chance heroics. Long shot. Hoff gets it right in the net. And the Warriors with another dominant first quarter. We'll step aside. We'll be right back here. This is Indian Tech Women's Lacrosse presented by SummerCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah. 
yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back. The Warriors on top of the Saints in the first. And the... Ground ball faceoff will wind back up with Indiana Tech. Here's Farrell. Farrell through the lane. Backs up on it. And dishes it off to Burr. Front of the net. Burr gets it knocked down. Ground ball will wind up out of the crease and picked back up briefly by the Warriors. But it's a ground ball once more, and Farrell comes out of the pile with it. Ricky. Over to Burr. Burr has it getting shoved off her path a little bit. Burr goes top down and it won't cross the goal line. Picked back up by the Warriors regardless. It's Ricky with it again. Pass it off Farrell. Through the lane, this was finds the back of the net. Farrell with another goal on the day as she gets it back. And the Warriors lead by six.
Farrell hat trick on the day after that one. And we'll get ready for another face off. Farrell scores the goal, winds up with a face off, and takes a shot. And looks like that will be a penalty. It will be. Knocked down and picked back up off of the try to get the pass off. Meinrich comes up with it. Meinrich and rings. Shouldering much of the scoring load. They've handled the ball much of today. Knocked down and it will go out of bounds and it will be Warrior Ball. Ball gets it in front, pass over, it's knocked down, and it will be scooped up by the Saints and put right into the basket of Stilson. Stilson drops it off in the crease, and it will be a bit of confusion. She just set it down, thinking she was under the impression. The Warriors would not be able to get it, but Maul has it. Apologies for my arrogance, not sure of the rule. In front, wide open, look, it's Burr! Another hat trick on the day for the Warriors. Um, man up goal. <laughs> Eleven twenty one to go in the second. The Warriors continue to pile on. Picked up and almost a cross check. They're going to let him play on as Hanlon hits the deck. Rings. Passes it off behind the net. Juan is looking to get started once more. And Hoff knocks it down into the stick of Rucksters. A great day for Hoff. And all the way an open pass for King. King taking it towards the crease. Backs up, hands it off to Donnelly. Spin move and looks like they'll get a penalty shot.
Donnelly going through and goes out of bounds and it will be a little bit of a push so Qantas has the ball, 10 minutes to go in the first half. Warriors slowing it up. This is what they did against Rochester on Wednesday night in the rain and snow and sleet. Donnelly behind the net, 40 seconds to go on the shot clock. Donnelly cuts it in front and knocked down! And a huge collision. After the save, and that will once again put Terrapins will go to towards the box after that huge collision. Not a free position, but the Warriors once more a man up. Suspended a a animation now. The horn is sounding not sure why. Appears to be intentional, but play will resume after some suspended animation. Donnelly. It's going through the lane. That was Burr. Got it back, and now it's going to be Burr with free position. Burr scores the goal. Make that an eight goal lead now for the Warriors. And once again, they have jumped on top of a team. So we get ready for another face-off with 8.27 to go. Coach Chip Vat Vasquez in his first season. With the Saints, looking to build a program, obviously. Start somewhere and numbers a little low for Aquinas. Only have one person on the bench at a given time. As Maul gets it in front and looks like we'll get another infraction. Clock is running. Clock did not start, so 8.03 now and it looks like Get started here once more with Aquinas having the ball. One, one, one. 
This Warrior defense is suffocating. As Qantas just has nowhere to pass. Pass a little too high, and it will be scooped back up by the Warriors as a cross check. Warriors still have possession. Ball on the ground, picked back up. This one goes away, and it will be a ground ball by Rucksters, but not going to count as it quickly goes back to the Saints. Gets a little push there, and All the way down the field. Good pass. Gives up Meinrich. Meinrich in towards the crease. Meinrich is in the Stigelhoff. What a day she's having. All the way down the field. Tailing off. It will be Aquinas's ball ground ball and taken away breakers now it's Donnelly gives it up Deja Rucksters Donnelly spin move. Donnelly goes in, takes a fall, and it, a push called. Goes through and knocked down, and it will be picked up. Deja Rucksters sc scores another one. The Saints have yet to score as the this quarter as the Warriors continue to pile on. Forty to go in the first half, and the Saints elect for a timeout. We'll step aside here on SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season, or complete games live or on demand. After all. Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. 
Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the eight to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to some of the uh, devices that you'll be used, but I like to actually assign projects that are, you know, realistic projects. Those projects as project-based learning help students to work together in a group and be hands-on with their uh, the material or the uh, product that they're creating. Engineering students at Indiana Tech are to me stand out because I know that they've had a lot of experiences working in groups, working on projects, um, doing lab experiments to help them understand the material. And I think that prepares them well. Canada. Welcome back. 4.40 to go. Indiana Tech leads by nine as they've once again dominated. Only two games left here in this Warrior season. They'll be home here Wednesday night and then they'll go to Madonna next week before the WAC tournament. Most likely having a home game. Bonus trying to get something started here out of the timeout. Hoff having a great day in net, has four saves. And Aquan is slowing it up slightly. Going through the lane and knocked down, and it will be a flag on the play. And it's at the Hoth making another save. <laughs> Going to be a ch tough, tough proposition as Mine Rich. One of the leading goal scorers on the team. Knocked down by Hoff again, but the deflection goes right towards the Saints. And it will be the 16th goal of the season for Trinity Rosono. A good initial save by Hoff, but deflection took her off her path. And it will be Aquinas' ball. So Aquinas trying to get on the comeback trail. Knocked down in the air. Picked right back up by the Saints. It's going to be Flaneri with it. Going towards the line. Knocked down. And it's Warrior Ball. Deja Rucksters. Great vertical, quick movement. Now it's Donnelly. Now 
moved over. Gets it back up. Burr. Moving around. Get, looking for a pass. Finds her, her partner behind the net. It will be out of bounds on Donnelly and nothing going there. All the way down the field and it will be picked up almost. S battle for the ball eventually does wind up with Sh Schottemeyer and they're going to pass it back. Almost lost. Picked up by Bowen and Stiltson passes it off Soski knocked down and having trouble picking it up is King and it will be Warrior Ball Shot clock is off, 1.10 to go in the first half. Turn around, couldn't get the shot off. Stiltson picks it up easily, and now it's up to Aquanis. With 50 seconds to go, they can start trying to make a miraculous comeback all the way down the field. It's going to be picked up, mine rich. And she does lose it. Couldn't get enough on to get the stick. Rucksters picks it up. 30 seconds to go. Rucksters looking for another goal to close off, close out the half. Deja Rucksters spin move. Deja Rucksters through defenders and the ball's in the back of the net. Will they count it? They will not. Second goal of the day wiped off for the Warriors. 10 seconds to go. Qantas tr trying to get it away to stop the Warriors once more. Three seconds to go. That'll put a close to the first half. It was another dominant performance by the Warriors. They'll look to send themselves to Wednesday night with two games left as they fight for their seating in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference after these must. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. 
I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands on with the materials that I'm gonna be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're gonna have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're gonna have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're gonna to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner. Uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in a, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of the of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And, but it wasn't just learning about that, it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, 
it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. What's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the 8 to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering. Welcome back, third quarter about to get underway as Indiana Tech has a commanding lead over the Saints. Indiana Tech will get the ball back quickly. Burr, all over to Rucksters. Once again, only two games left in the season. One here on Wednesday night. We'll have a doubleheader with the men's team. Moved over. Open look is in the net. 
Another goal for the Warriors. This time it's Jada Pope who finds the back of the net over top bar. And once again, the Indiana Tech Warriors one goal away from a 10 goal. Pope hitting the gritty on the Jumbotron here at Warrior Stadium. Face-off is still being bounced around and giving chase. Farrell picks it up. In and out of the basket before it gets off. Ruxers. Deja Ruxers. Over the head of Donnelly giving chase and just saving it for it goes out of bounds. Is Burr. Farrell. Farrell going in and she scores! A double digit lead once more for Indiana Tech. And we will revert to the running clock. Start with 13.10 to go. The freshman Farrell out of New Zealand. The Saints turn it right back over. Wide open pass. Donnelly. Try to get the pass in, but it was intercepted, and it will be Aquinas' ball as Risono hits the deck hard. In the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference right now, Lawrence Tech in on top with a 5-0 record. Marion with 5-1. Indiana Tech on their way to 5-1. And, and then there's the 4-3 Pilots in Concordia. And then these Aquinas Saints are in sixth, followed closely by Siena Heights. Those teams play on Wednesday. And then Rochester and Madonna at the bottom without a win in conference play. All the way down the field. Mine Rich passes it off. All the this one, Rosano. <laughs> R 
Springs has it. Rings, Rosono in front, gets it past Hoff. Second goal of the day for Rosono. And that'll result in an Indiana Tech timeout. The running clock is off. Just a touch under 10 minutes to go here. We'll step aside. We'll be right back here on SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Welcome back, Aquanis gets the ball back quickly after the whistle sounds and just touching the out of bounds line. The Warriors will quickly regain possession. 9.40 to go, coming off of the timeout. Forty seconds on the shot clock for the Warriors. Farrell having a great day today. Farrell taking it herself and it's looks like it'll be a penalty shot for Farrell. <laughs> Farrell goes in and knocked down. Going to stop play momentarily as one of the Aquinas players.
Saints trying to fight back into this one. Moving the ball around the crease. A minute left on the shot clock. This one. Hoff! Right at the crossbar. Gets it in the cradle. And quickly turned right over. Pass intercepted. And this one scores right past Hoff. And Meinrich takes the punishment for it. As it's back to back goals for the Saints with 7.16 to go here in the third. Meinrich took a hard collision before. Deja Rucksters. Gets it over Donnelly. Flag on the play. Foul once again be on Rasono. And it will be a penalty shot here for the Warriors. Going in, going low. This time it doesn't work. That's worked well for the Warriors today. And they turn it right back over. While still rolling towards midfield as the wind really starting to pick up here. Meinrich has it, gives it over Rings. Rings on an island, quickly gets meted. It's going to be knocked away by Hoff. And it will be an interference call on the Saints. And the Warriors will catch a break getting the ball right back. Once again, apologies if you have trouble hearing the audio here as the wind interferes with our microphones. Do my best. Galini passes it up the field to Hanlon. Hanlon goes right side. Donnelly scores! What a shot! So Donnelly nuts another one. And it will be picked up. Meinrich. Over to Rings. As she goes towards the crease.
Ring still with possession around the net. Hoff into the cradle, knocks it down and retrieves it. Hoff looking for a pass all the way down the field and she finds her target in Farrell. Farrell wide open, has nothing but green grass ahead her, is going to meet Susky. There Donnelly gets it aside to back up for handing off Hanlin in front of the net and picked up by Stiltson. Rucksters picks off the interception. 4-10 to go in the third. Boxers again. Warriors gave two goals straight, try, trying to get back to the 10 goal lead, and Donnelly will do it! Back to a 10 goal lead for the Warriors. Some fencing going on on the bench right now. How about that? Celebrations getting more and more creative by the day. And even without the lack of music, the bench still getting in on it and supporting their team. Face off all the way down the field. And with nobody there able to go across the line to grab it will be picked up by Vellini. But then a lot of contact as Donnelly will. And got a green card. Warriors once again. Up a player. Front of the net, turn around. This one scores the goal. It's another one from Jada Pulp, her second of the day. Once again, the Warriors getting their groove back. One minute to go in the third. Warriors with an 11 goal lead. Ball on the ground and it will be into the net of Stilson. Knocked out by Burr. Rolling out of bounds and will be out. Warriors going to look for a another goal before it's all said and done. And intercepted out of the air set into the crease and it will be 
Deja Ruxers picks it back up. 20 seconds to go here in the third. Ruxers moving in. Ruxers, their great ability to slice up the defense comes in clutch again as she scores with five seconds left in the quarter. The horn will sound. And we have 15 more minutes of lacrosse before we head off to Wednesday night as the season winds down. What's up, side? Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the eight to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to some of the uh, devices that you'll be used, but I like to actually assign projects that are, you know, realistic project. Those projects, this project-based learning, help students to work together in a group and be hands-on with their, uh, the material or the uh, product that they're creating. Engineering students at Indiana Tech are, to me, stand out because I know that they've had a lot of experiences working in groups, working on projects, um, doing lab experiments to help them understand the material, and I think that prepares them well for industry. First thing I'll tell a high school student is study, study, study. Get all the math you can possibly get. Um, I honestly believe that the critical thinking skills you learn in math courses will help you with engineering courses. The type of knowledge base that students should have coming in, they need to be problem solvers and critical thinkers. Uh, those two things are really the essence of engineering, regardless of flavor, they're going to need to figure out, there's a problem here, how do I solve it? And they, they need to think critically about that. They need to observe, listen to people, and then kick in those problem-solving skills to, uh, to solve the problem. Part of the, the growth of Indiana Tech has involved uh, a, an increasing number of international students. So I think if we can expose students to different ideas, um, different cultures, again, it makes them that much more competitive in the marketplace. In uh, the Fort Wayne area, we have uh, lots of large companies, BAE Systems, Fort Wayne Metals, General Motors, Raytheon, um, Harris Corporation, and the list goes on. We have a lot of employers that want our engineering students. Indiana Tech, um, I think, continues to serve students even beyond their graduation. We really strive to keep in touch with our alumni on a personal level just to see how they're doing, but then also they want to give back to the university because of the experiences they've had here, um, so they want to provide opportunities for other students here as well. Welcome back here on the campus of Indiana Tech where the Warriors have dominated all day. They're up by 12 as we wind down 
in this women's lacrosse season. Ruckster is going through the lane and gets her shot knocked down. Running clock and Las Aquanis can score three goals here in the last 13.50 of this one. That one is another goal for the Warriors. Brooke Burr scores again. Indiana Tech can do no wrong right now. All the way down the field. We have a battle for the ball here. Now it's Aquinas with the ball. Here comes Indiana Tech again. It's Hamilton with it. Hamilton does a spin move. 7 saves on the day for Kat Hoff as she defense is held up incredibly well including 3 of those goals being on penalty shots, one of them off a deflection, so a great day for her and you always talk about stat sheets. Stilson has 12 saves on the day. Obviously had to face a lot of shots. It's Burr. Donnelly moves back. 10 minutes to go. Burr gets it knocked away. Winds up with a Qantas. For Aquinas, two goals on the day for Salem Rings. One goal for Mine Rich. And then you take with the ball back momentarily. And then four goals for Deja Rucksters. Four goals for Michelle Farrell. Four goals for Brooke Burr. Four goals for Faith Donnelly. And two goals for Jada Pope. Along with five assists for Burr, she's just been a do-it-all-everything for the Warriors this season. <laughs> the 
down the field. Pass incomplete as Gilmore loses it. She nearly had it. Mine Rich picks it back up, moving towards the net. Spin move and quite a bit of contact. No call. There's a call for a push as Lexi Gallini. It's another penalty shot for Cat Hoff to face. She goes for save number eight on the day. Meinrich moves in and scores the goal. Her third on the day. <laughs> Clock still running, 7.50 to go in this game. All the way down the field, will be picked up by Burr. Burr is getting swiped at, still keeps it alive. And she will be fouled. Through the lane, Donnelly scores! Gets it right back! Fifth goal of the day for Donnelly. The clock continues to run. Aquinas wins. The face-off. Trying to add some goals, obviously. They come back highly improbable at this point. Pope again, looking for the hat trick. Jada Pope. The lane. It's a goal! Warriors add another one. Danny McComer with another assist for from Brooke Burr. Danny McComber's first shot of the day results in the first goal, a 20th goal, one shot, one goal. Be picked up 
passes it over, loses it. Four minutes to go in the game. Streaking down the field. Here comes the Warriors again. See if they elect to just move the ball around the crease. That's what they did against Rochester. The running clock, Donnelly. This is a tough part where you have to factor in sportsmanship with what you need to do because you can't let off the gas quite yet. You do have a conference tournament to think of coming up in a couple of weeks. Through lane, and it's a hat trick for Pope! With three minutes to go, it's a third goal for Pope. As Indiana Tech just continues to pump up that score. Will be another decisive victory for the Warriors as they have another game here on Wednesday night. We'll be here for that at 3 o'clock. Knocked away. Picked back up after this possession. Whoever has it should, if any attack gets the ball back, it will end the game. Hoff giving chase to do that just there. And she does. That'll put an end to this one with 117 left on the clock. This one goes and it will be picked up. Aquinas is looking for one last goal and it's picked up by Pope with a minute to go. Does she have a fourth goal in her? She brings it down the field. We'll see if the Warriors even want to take another shot. Whistle sounds. Ball will stay with the Warriors. Qantas does get it back with 20 seconds to go. And they should just let this one run down. We'll be back here Wednesday night, as I said before, as they face Siena Heights. Sienna Heights, the seventh ranked team in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference, and that'll sound the horn. Maybe not. That'll sound the horn, and it's another decisive victory for the Warriors as they defeat. Aquanis 21 to 6. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you back here Wednesday night. This has been Carson Watkins. This has been Indian Tech Women's Lacrosse presented by SummerCity Sports.com.